Welcome back to Sister Circle Live. Our next guest has blazed a trail in Christianity. Mm. She's the first woman to serve as a bishop in the AME Church. Please welcome my soror and the granddaughter of founder Vashti Turley Murphy, Vashti McKenzie. Yay! 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 Thank you for having me. Yes, yes. So I got to tell you, you are black history right before us. You really are. Um, you're elected the 117th elected and consecrated bishop of the AME Church. Mm. How does that feel? Uh, well, to tell you the truth, you don't really walk into it thinking, oh, this is going to be history making. This is going to be extraordinary. You know, you're going to be the first one out there. There's no book. There's no CD. There's no conference you can go to. Right. There's not anybody else you can talk to to find out uh, what does this feel like and what's going to happen. And so for me, it's about doing the work. It's about doing the service. So if I focus on what my responsibilities are, if I take care of the people who are with, under my charge and influence, if I teach and train uh, pastors and teachers and evangelists, find resources for the ministry that needs to be done, good. Mm -hmm. We'll worry about the history later. Mm -hmm. can, I add, can I just add another question, uh, and I'm going to step back for a minute and let my sisters take over. What challenges have you incurred with being the first woman? Mm. Well, because you're the first, there is no road map. So mm -hmm. people are really not quite sure how to treat you mm. or what to say, you know, and everybody in the room is not for you. Right. Mm -hmm. Everybody's oh not happy, but you're happy. Everyone right. is not happy with your success. Everyone is not that happy is with, with achievement. Not happy with uh, and so um, when you move forward to do it, there will be challenges. People yes. will... Uh, uh, second, uh, second guess you. Yes. Uh, they will want you to go over and over and over again the decisions. You know, you got to prove your decision. Mm. Wait, I made the decision. Right. And I made the decision based on these things. Right. Mm. And so you always feel that you have to prove yourself every single day. Wow. And that can be exhausting. That wow. absolutely. It can be absolutely exhausting. My God today. Mm. Well, do, do you think a lot of times men in, um, in the Christian faith, I'll just even say, do you think they feel like women have specific roles and this is not necessarily a role that they definitely want to see you in? <laughs> and, and with that being said, how did you overcome that? Well, there, there are those, yes, who believe uh, in s certain specific roles, but the Lord called me to do a do job. It? And mm. my penalty would be if I said no mm -hmm. to Jesus mm -hmm. just to uh, affirm what you believe mm. ought to be. Mm. Uh, and so I said yes. And the moment I said yes, then there was such a wonderful peace that overcame me. Uh, and God began to put me in positions I would never put myself. Mm -hmm. I would never even dream of putting yourself. And that's when you know that this is what God wants you to do. Mm. That's right. well, Bishop, let's switch gears and let's talk about millennials. Um, millennials are leaving the church by the droves. What is the reasoning for this? And what can the church do to keep millennials in the church? There are many reasons why people back away from mm -hmm. faith. Maybe they've had an experience or a negative experience, or maybe their needs are not being met. Mm -hmm. People will go to churches where their needs are being mm -hmm. met. When yeah. they hear a message that resonates mm -hmm. with where they are and what, what they need to go to. Mm -hmm. So I just believe church needs to begin to have a conversation where the millennials are having well, conversation. In it. Yes. Yeah. So if they're in social media having a conversation, uh, don't look at social media as a toy, it's a tool. It's a tool, it's a tool to be yes. able to share a message that brings them a little bit closer. And then once you have their attention, then you can begin that ministry, that nurturing, uh, that discipleship, that teaching. Mm -hmm. But you have to capture their attention. Millennials are just not going to sit around and let you lecture at them for 30 mm -hmm. minutes. It's just not going to happen. Yeah. And they don't have the patience. Yeah. You know, wait until you're 40 and then maybe, no, 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 we no. want to do it now. Social yes. media. So we want to have it done now. Do you think social media plays a role in the fact that they don't have this patience? You mm -hmm. know, because everything is so immediate access. All they have to do is go to their phone. Oh, uh, love for the Lord. Type it in and Google and ask, love, now teach me how to love the Lord. Yeah. Kanye well, pops up. Yeah. <laughs> Corinthians pops up. Yeah. She said Kanye pops okay. up. Okay. <laughs> <Well. laughs> Well, you know, it started long before social media mm. uh, because we grew up in, in an era where everything was solved in 30 minutes, 60 minutes, or 90 minutes. Okay. Life is a series. And so everything was light, sound, camera, action. And so I go to church and the, uh, so when I find myself, and 
now I go to church and you get screens in church, you get light, mm -hmm. movement, action, because now mm -hmm. our attention span is shorter. That's yes. true. Yeah. You know, you're talking about three, you know, three ideas in, in one speech, it just doesn't happen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we've seen a lot of major leaders that have been under fire and scrutiny, mm -hmm. uh, and it's hit the church. A lot of scandals have hit the church. What do you do to keep yourself out of the drama? <laughs> There's drama Especially everywhere. The church, the church drama. Wherever you have, <laughs> right, well, wherever you have people, you have drama. It right, can be in the courthouse, in your own family house. It can be in the schoolroom, classroom, and the church. Wherever you have people with differences of opinions, yes. uh, you will always have some uh, some drama. The difference is in church is that there's a particular standard that we're all trying to to live and everybody is not at the same way. Mm -hmm. Just like every flower doesn't blossom at the, the same, same time, time, every flower does blossom. And so our patience is loving people the way they are until they get to the way that God wants them to be. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that takes a whole yes, lot. Yes, but keep your focus on who you are worshiping. You are not worshiping an individual. You're mm. not worshiping one man. You're not worshiping the choir. You're not worshiping the music. You are worshiping God. Mm -hmm. And yes, there are people who will disappoint you and get in the way, but you keep your focus on Jesus Christ, you'll yeah, be all right. So mm. right. Mm. Now, wh where do you think uh, the church stands in this political climate? Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Were you waiting on that question? <laughs> My God, to uh, you know, the, the fact of the matter is, is that 50, 50 percent, 51 percent, 52 percent of African-Americans go to church somewhere along the line every week. And so if you want to reach a, a good chunk of people, then you will always go to the church. Every time there is an election, they, I promise you, there will be a hot button issue that'll divide the church, mm. that'll divide the people. Mm -hmm. uh, in between elections, you don't hear a thing at all. No. But mm -hmm. as soon as an election comes, bam, 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 mm -hmm. and we're upset, and we're mad, and we're angry, and we don't make wise decisions because we take the hype the rhetoric and mm. we never go look for the truth. Mm. Let me add to around elections you see that's when a lot of the political figures jump in and they're all about mm. the church. What do you do to protect your congregation from that? Because if you're going to be for the people you need to be for the people all of the time not <laughs> just during election time. Mm. Yeah. If you you have to hold elected officials accountable. accountable. This is what you promise. Did you mm -hmm. do what you promised? Are you only here when there is election? Mm -hmm. Do you come right. back after the election? Mm -hmm. Do we see you in between? Mm -hmm. uh, the church is in the community. We're at ground zero. Yep. We are mm -hmm. dealing with issues and people every yes. single day. And said, instead, you want us to come to the table and co-sign on your decision, mm -hmm. on right. your policy, on your plan, rather than come talk to us. Mm -hmm. We can tell you what's going on. Well, Bishop McKenzie, we're going to come back with yeah. more. Um, you guys stay with us. We're going to keep talking more about these issues when we come back from yeah. the break. This is the Circle Live. We are joined by Bishop Bash Ty McKenzie. I'm sitting here scratching on my shirt, but it's okay. It's time for our Ask the Bishop segment. We asked our viewers if they had anything they've always wanted to ask their spiritual leader, but maybe too embarrassed to do it in person. So here are a few questions. Now they're not all great questions. Now they're a little uh oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, like, slightly controversial. Yeah. But one person asked, and I want to get it right. I really sympathize with Dwayne Wade and his situation with his child. Making the decision to raise his son as a girl may have been tough to make. Is he handling this the right way? You really can't uh, judge him or his wife unless you have been in that position. Mm -hmm. Unless you have been in that position. The fact that she came to tell her parents that this is what was happening with her says to us that there, was, that there is a trust factor mm -hmm between parents and child. That the child didn't go outside of the house and say, uh, consult their peers and consult whatever, but the family seems to be taking a position to support her because that family is going to have to be a buffer between her and everyone else yes. who may not be as loving, may not be as kind, may not be accepting or belonging. What I share with people is that we have to do what Jesus does. Jesus, when Jesus came, he walked around with a whole lot of people that were on the margins, where the religious status quo says that you are not acceptable. You can't go to temple, you can't do this, you can't do that. And Jesus took to the people on the margins and say, you are now beneficiaries of God's love, of God's grace, and God's mercy. 
So Jesus, you know, you know, people say, well, they're not church material, but you were always Christ material. Mm. Mm. So let's do what Jesus would do. Well All said, right. Bishop. Y'all ain't got no questions for her today. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, here's the next question. It's a, it's a, it's a shift. Okay, it says now, um, it says, um, this person says, I've been in a relationship with my boyfriend for two years. We are now looking for apartments together. However, he has not put a ring down to her finger. Mm. And so she wants to know, are they moving too fast, even though moving in together could save money on rent? So the question is, are they moving too fast? Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, because now you're talking about um, entangling your finances. You know, I want to live together based on convenience, not based on covenant. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so now we're going to entangle something that may be very hard for us to untangle mm -hmm. sure from. Mm -hmm. So are we committed to playhouse mm. or are we committed to be a family and a couple together. Oh mm -hmm. my God. That's good. That's real good. I mean, ask you, yourself. See, like, you're going to get me in That's trouble. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm getting ready to say something. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Yeah. Is it out of convenience or is it really out of commitment? Which one is it? Yeah. And so that's a really good question. When so you I'm could be doing something bigger later that can hurt you later. Right. Not and she's right. It's hard to get well, up out of that. She's you, sure you, are, you are occupied with someone who has not made, made a commitment when there's someone out there who wants to make a commitment and the temporary is in the way of the permanent. Ooh. Ooh. But one more time, the temporary is in, in the, the way, way of, the of the permanent. And yes. message. He can't yes. get to you because you all tied up. Well, I oh. want to have an apartment to save money. Mm -hmm. oh. When there's someone over here that wants to have a who life. Who wants to have a life. life with you to invest in you mm. and you walk together. Yeah, and I'm like to invest, invest in me, my God. All right, here's another one. <laughs> Ask the bishop, okay? okay? We tend to go to the church for everything, okay? Uh, even mental health issues, we yes. go to the church and, it's, and the church tells us to just pray it away. And we know that that's not true. Why do you think the church does not say, hey, you might need to see a mental specialist? Okay. Why is that? Spiritual disciplines are powerful. They are. Prayer, fasting, worship, praise, study. They are very powerful tools. And yes, people are healed. They are healed today or they're healed over time. But that does not exempt you going to see a counselor mm -hmm. who can help you unpack some things that are going on. Right. We're not talking <clears throat> about trouble. We're talking about trauma. You know, mm. we sing the song that trouble don't last always. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Trauma tends to set up and live in your on. living room. <laughs> Ooh, and that's wants so good. to stay with you for a long around. time. That is such a good, good point. So, because people think that yeah. trouble and trauma are one and the same, but they're mm. not. Mm -mm. Oh, trouble okay. comes and goes. This too shall so pass. pass. Mm. But trauma affects every area of your life mm. that's going to take time, some talking through, some working through to be able to grow beyond what has happened. You may not forget what has happened, mm -hmm. right? That's good. but you can grow beyond what has happened so that it doesn't impact you the same way it impacted you the first day it happened. Mm -hmm. wow. I wish we could just keep you all doing <laughs> But what do you have coming up, um, Bishop McKenzie? Well, Sailor Leadership Encounter for Women uh, is, and Sailor the Atlanta edition, is a safe place for women to come to pause. Push that rewind button, uh, take a good long look at what is happening in your life so that you can really make better decisions. Sailor mm -hmm. is a Hebrew word that means stop here before moving forward. Mm. So we want you to come to stop it, Sailor, take a little self care, and hear from women. Uh, who have done that and been there. Trendsetters, thought leaders, they all come to Salem and have a wonderful experience. So this is not, this is not a conference. Mm -hmm. It is a community of resourcing women. It is not just an event. It is an experience. And women who come walk away uh, with a brand new life. Well, we thank you so much for coming here. Um, thank you. We love you. We have an open door policy for you anytime you want to come here. And to keep up with the bishop on Instagram, you can keep up with her by following her at Ashti McKenzie. Coming